For 35 chapters, God is silent. For 35 chapters, God says nothing. For 35 chapter, Job cries out to God. For 35 chapters, Bildad, Zophar, Eliphaz, and Elihu deliberate, consternate, exasperate, and pontificate. And God, he says nothing. That all changes in chapter 38, our text for this evening. The hidden God becomes the revealed God. And what God reveals is absolutely amazing. Such power, such wisdom, such awesome greatness. What human can really stand the words of the Almighty? With this warning then, brace yourself. God speaks. And what God speaks is all according to his character. He doesn't speak like a human would. You know, when humans are confronted with questions of where, when, why, what, how, our typical response is to explain, to rationalize, to deviate and obfuscate like politicians and reporters. But that's not God's way. Oh no. God is not like us humans. God owes no one an explanation. God is not beholden to anyone. God is God. And he can do what he wants. So this is the truth for the day. Instead of an explanation from God, we receive a revelation of God. God finally speaks. Out of the storm, God speaks. In the middle of thunder and lightning, God speaks. To the father who was given a rose from his son's coffin, God speaks. To the wife who was given the flag that is draped across her husband's casket, God speaks. To the couple with the barren womb and the fervent prayers, God speaks. To any person who is looking for God through shattered glass, God speaks. Our God speaks in the middle of our storms and his voice thunders with power and majesty and authority. Job 31.8 Then Yahweh answered Job out of the storm. This storm has huge thunderclouds replete with lightning flashing back and forth. It is a massive show of force, a kind of category type storm for a category five type of God. And in the middle of that storm, we hear the word, the name Yahweh. It's the first time this name appears since chapter 1 and 2 of Job. From chapters 3 to 37, the people called him Elohim and El Shaddai, God and the Almighty. But here in chapter 38, Yahweh reappears. Why does that matter? Exodus 3.14. Moses asked God, what is your name? And God said, yeah, yeah, I am who I am. And Jesus also asserts that's his name. 
I am the bread of life. I am the good shepherd. I am the resurrection and the life. Yahweh is God's personal name. And no one dare speak that name unless they are personally known by God. For 35 chapters, Job is consumed with all kinds of questions. Where are you, God? Why am I going through this? When will it end? How could you do this to me? But the most important questions aren't where, when, why, and how. The most important question is who? Who is in control of all this? Who is behind all of this? And this who question is answered in chapters 38, 39, 40, and 41 of Job. And when you read those chapters, what you discover is not an explanation from God, but a revelation of God. He says, where were you when I laid the earth's foundation? Why? <laughs> Tell me if you know so much. Do you know how its dimensions were determined and who laid its foundations? Who did the surveying? What supports these foundations? And who laid its cornerstone as the morning stars sang together and all the angels shouted for joy? <laughs> Job had been filling God's ears with his questions, and now the tables are turned. God questions Job. Divine questions pour down on Job like sheets of rain. They splatter in the chambers of his hearts with a wildness and a, a beauty and a terror that leaves every Job, who has ever asked a question, drenched and amazed and absolutely speechless. What starts here doesn't end until chapter 41. And when you read through these chapters, there's a list of 70, count them, 70 questions that God asks Job. And the point of it all is this. Job needs to let God be God. There is a God, and we are not Him. To underscore this point, God repeatedly points out that the universe is vast and infinitely complex. The sun is 109 times larger than the earth. You can put a million earths inside the volume of the sun. The sun is a part of a galaxy, the Milky Way galaxy. That galaxy is 104,000 light years across. Think about that. The speed of light is 186,000 miles a second. There are 31,526,000 seconds in a year. That's over 6 trillion miles that light travels in one year. And the Milky Way is 104,000 times 6 trillion. The Milky Way is filled with a hundred billion stars. And if the information from the Hubble telescope is correct, it indicates that there are over 250 billion galaxies in this universe. Vast, beyond human comprehension, and 
the universe is still expanding. Can you see it, Job? Asked God. Can you rejoice in it like I do? As the morning stars sing with joy, can, can you do that too, Job? Can you rejoice in it? Can you see how complex this universe is? Can, can you grasp the immensity of it all, Job? Are you my equal? Can you match my power, my ability, my skill, my knowledge? Can you, Job? And finally, after all these questions, Job musters up the courage to answer. And this is all he can say. I am unworthy. How can I reply to you? I put my hand over my mouth and spoke once, but I have no answer. Twice, but I will say no more. Then Job replied to the Lord, I know that you can do all things. No plan of yours can be thwarted. Job gets it. He's been like the water boy telling Larry Bird how to shoot a basketball. He's been like a bat boy telling Ty Cobb how to hit a baseball. He's been like a tech caddy telling Jack Nicholas how to putt a golf ball. He's been the clay telling the potter what to do. Job gets it. And Job surrenders and in surrendering he stops pressing God for an explanation and instead receives a revelation you and I know how hard it can be to surrender though because humility just crushes our ego surrender is not in our vocabulary we think that we can plan our life. We think we can map our life out. We think that we're strong enough to control our lives, to handle this lives of ours. And so often we just ignore God's way and go follow our own plans. We try to scoot God off his throne and set ourselves on that seat. Our prayer is often, God, please bless my plans rather than asking God to reveal His plans for us. <laughs> but that doesn't work with God. God is God and can do what He wants. And when God's plans don't match up with our plans, we get angry, we get mad, it hurts our feelings that God doesn't want the same things that I want. But Job gets it. And Job surrenders. And when Job surrenders, he receives a revelation. Do you get it? Do you really get it? Can you learn from Job? Because when in faith you surrender to God, you get a revelation rather than an explanation. A revelation of unlimited love and mercy. A revelation of, when, of who God really is. God is love. This God who can squish you like a bug instead reveals that he is a God of infinite mercy and grace. And this is the revelation that we receive in Holy Scripture. This God who once clothed himself in a storm, in the fullness of time clothed himself in human flesh. God in Jesus took on flesh so that he could hold us in our, his arms so that he could destroy our darkness and heal our hurts. He became a human being 
not to demonstrate the innocence of infancy, but to live the life that we couldn't, to receive the judgment of God that we couldn't and now need not. On this Sunday of the Passion, our God, wrapped in human flesh, entered the holy city of Jerusalem amid shouts of praise. Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of Yahweh. But that wasn't the plans of the Pharisees and the Sadducees, whose shouts of praise later in the week turned into venomous shouts of death. Crucify him. Crucify him. And crucify him they did, hanging the Son of God on a tree, planted in a hole on that ash heap called Golgotha. There Jesus took on himself the wrath of God, the punishment of our sins. God thundered on him in judgment while he was on the cross, struck him with the wages of sin, death itself. Jesus endured the judgment that we should have borne. So do you get it? Our God is not a God who is distant, far away, disconnected. Our God is a God who is with us, who speaks to us in our storms, who has become like us in Christ Jesus. Do you hurt? He hurt. Are you broken? He was broken. Do you bleed? He bled. Do you cry? He cried. God is fully present with us and for us. And one day, in the eternal light of glory, when we are brought into the presence of Yahweh, our Creator, fully in our flesh, because Jesus rose from the flesh, we'll look back on the story written in our lives and in the lives of all people, and we will declare, He has done all things well. Job's attitude begins with a mixture of self-pity and self-assertion. As his life was destroyed by one calamity after another, Job sank into grief. Then, in spite of his wife's advice to curse God and die, he refuses to stop defending his innocence. Job's friends suggest that he try the attitude of self-accusation. Oh, come on, Job, admit it. You've done something terribly wrong to deserve something like this. Repent, and it'll soon all be all right. But Job refused to be bullied into signing a false confession. His fourth friend, Elihu, suggested that he try the attitude of self-discipline. He pleaded with Job, to see that there is a purpose in pain, learning in loss, instruction in injury. He coached Job that this is just God's way of uh, making sure that we are corrected. But in the midst of all this foolishness, God finally speaks. And when God speaks, there's nothing left to be said. He says, Job, the only attitude that works in the kingdom of God is self-surrender. Falling on your knees in reverence, fear, and awe. So what about you? In your storms, you can give up on God. You can call him a fake, a phony, and a fraud, or 
in surrender, in humility worked by the Holy Spirit, you can turn yourself over to God. And when you do that, you receive not an explanation, but a revelation. In surrender, we make our declaration of dependence. And how do you do that? You pray it every week. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. I dare you to pray these words because a revelation beats an explanation every time, all the time. And now may the peace of God which surpasses our human understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.